Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, just went to work, and I'm about to go to work myself. But today, we are reviewing the Cold Steel American Lawman in S35VN blade steel with a beautiful drop point blade, G10 handles, and the triad lock. Let's get into it. So this knife was sent to me to check out by Timbo. Uh, thank you again, Timbo. I appreciate everything you do for our channel, man. You're awesome. Um, so I needed some cold steels on the channel. And so he sent me a bunch. And he even let me keep one of the spider codes he sent, which is amazing. But I need to get more cold steels on the channel. I know, I know. So hopefully here coming up in the future, I will keep having them. The total length on this knife is eight inches with a blade length of about three and a quarter. It's just a tiny bit over three and a quarter. The drop point blade here is a hollow grind it's not a deep hollow but it's a hollow and it's got a dlc coating on there which seems to be holding up really good if you're gonna have a coating dlc is the way to go it's a lot stronger than other coatings so you know um i mean it isn't as i noticed on this one and it could be just that it's used a lot more it's not as shiny or as slick as the Recon 1, and I'm guessing that's just because of use, so this one's going to have a little bit more wear on it, but here is a size comparison to the Recon 1, and here is a size comparison to the Cold Steel Code 4. All of these are Cold Steel knives. You can see the Code 4 is just a little bit bigger. Now let's do a Spyderco Shaman, which is just a little bit bigger than the uh, American Lawman. And then here is a Hinder XM18 3.5 inch, which is just a tiny bit longer too. And then we'll do just one more, one more. Here's the Spider Co. Manix. And you can see they are the exact same length. So that is the size of the knife. Hopefully you know some of these knives I pulled out. If not, it's an eight inch knife so the blade i do love the blade i think uh it's a great drop point very useful blade like i said it's not a deep hollow grind but it is a hollow so that does make it cut relatively well and it's not an overly thick blade stock but you know it's a strong blade stock and then behind the edge thickness on this one was twenty thousand. so it's it cuts pretty good i did put an edge on it i have used it um I broke down a bunch of uh, recycling with it. I carried it for a couple days to work. Um, I didn't use it a ton at work, but I did use it at work. Um, it just so happened that day I didn't uh, have a lot to do, but I did, you know, I still used it at work. I just didn't, you know, wasn't using my knife all day. But yeah, the edge looks very nice. I did put a mirror edge on it. It already kind of had a mirror edge on it, but you could tell it had been used a little bit and just needed to be tuned up. So I did uh, resharpen it. Now there is one little spot on the tip. Um, I did not get out, but it's no big deal. You can barely see it. So I'm not that, I don't think he'll, he'll be that worried about it. The edge looks fantastic and it is very sticky very very sharp i'm happy with the edge a lot of mirror edges don't come some come out pretty sticky and then some don't s35 vn i feel like it's kind of hit or miss with mirror polished edges sometimes you know they look really good and they're very sharp so you know don't get me wrong they're still very sharp but then sometimes they uh they just they don't have a, as much stickiness on the edge as much bite on the edge as like this one does so this one definitely took you know a great edge um i sharpen it on some diamond stones um some diamond infused stones so the coating, like I said, is holding up very well. I mean, if you look at it, you can see it's kind of losing that, that mirror-y finish. I mean, it's coming more of a, um, uh, 
I can't think of the name of it. Not like satin, but like uh, just more of a um, not shiny. Let's just go with that. Whatever. Anyways, <laughs> so you see it has a finger choil here, but not really a sharpening choil. It just kind of stops at the plunge grind. Um, and nice big finger choil, though. You can get up nice and close to the blade. And then back here, you are locked in very well. Now, it's very thin. So... It's, it has good ergos because of this depth right here, but not so much when it comes to the width. You know, it's not really a palm filler, but it does lock in very well, and it's pretty comfortable. Now, when I'm locked in back here behind this, you know, I, I'm not gonna, I don't have huge hands, but you know, I have pretty large hands, um, and but like i said they're not they're not like they're massive hands or anything but when i'm back here like i notice i'm kind of just like hanging on to the butt of it a little bit uh, unless if i'm just doing like a push cut and then in that case i'm really locking in right there but you see my whole hand basically covers this whole bottom area even when i'm very locked up you know as high as i can possibly go but you know, taking advantage of this choil area really makes it fit in the hand really well. And I can still use it like this. I just haven't really that much. I tried it and, you know, I, I wasn't really that comfortable using it. I mean, I did. It was fine. I mean, I'll tell you what. When I do use it like this is when I'm using, like, the tip. You know, I lock my middle finger right underneath that choil and bam. And that's what's great about this blade shape is that it's such a versatile blade shape. Um, this is a great example of a, a good drop point blade to me. I love Cold Steel's drop points. They are a great example of a good drop point. I'd like to see them start doing more sheep's foots. Anyways, in the reverse grip, it's okay, but you do have this kind of hitting your hand a little bit. And, you know, you're not really going up there because you got this thing in the way. So the reverse pull grip, which I did do a few times at work when I popped off some straps, it worked, but it wasn't, you know, it's not the best. But the action on it, you have the back lock, which is the triad lock. I'll show a picture of the triad lock on this knife now the triad lock is supposed to be one of the strongest or the strongest lock in the world as of right now nothing's beat it so i gotta call it what it is right so until another lock comes forward and beats it in the pound for pound test i gotta call it what it is so this lock has a very big stop pin first of all which i love 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 but then it has when it locks into place because you see how that's going up right there when i'm pulling it out that's the back lock and then you have a little groove right here in the blade and it's going to snap down into that hole and then this is going to hit the stop pin and basically the lock is going to lock itself in between the the stop pin and clamp itself in and then the tension of the the lock bar is just going to keep digging itself deeper and deeper into that groove you know which is just going to make it stronger not only over time but even in use so it has three points of contact right here and then if you add this pin in over here it's four points of contact amazing so incredibly strong but uh using it so you want to keep your finger locked in behind this little spot right there because you want to make sure this flat area that's not sharpened hits your finger if you're going to do it one-handed and then you see right there how it comes down it's going to hit my finger and then you can either pull your hands out of the way and slap it shut or you can push it shut i mean it's up to you um i can flick this knife um it takes a little bit of effort because you got to get around this this corner right here so but i can and also it's a backlock so it's got that that type of resistance it's not really the type of resistance you get from a detent so you do have t a chance of just doing that so you really gotta try to flick it out um, I can middle finger flick it though. Middle finger flicking it seems like it's a little bit easier because my finger automatically goes that direction around this little spot right there. But, and also like I said, I can thumb flick it. It just takes a little bit of effort. You get used to it, so no big deal. But I very much enjoy slow rolling it. I think that's very satisfying and especially with that loud click. That pop in the, to the lock. And then I like the closing sound too. 
So pretty cool. It is pretty centered. There, um, it is locked up rock solid right here in all directions. But when it's closed, you know, there is a little bit of play inside there. Not that big of a deal. A lot of knives do that. And especially back locks. Now, um, like I said, push cuts with this thing when you are cutting with it, though. You know, I like that it, the back of it is basically straight. I mean, I know it has a little bit of a slope, but it feels good in the push cuts because you're nice close to the blade. So you're not getting stuff bunched up in here if you go too far into materials. Like if you stab too far into materials and you're push cutting or if you're just push cutting through cardboard or whatever, you can use your hand as a guide, you know, especially because you have the thumb studs. So you kind of want to go over the thumb studs to keep them out of the way too which is really nice so there's a lot of great things about this knife um that just work especially in use you know like some things look good and seem great but then in use they just don't work this does it works pretty good um now the clip you know, I, I don't really like cold steel clips, but this one works. I'm not going to lie. It works. Um, it seems a little shallow. Now, this one's been bent a little bit because the G10 is very grippy on this. That's another thing I forgot to mention. The G10 is very grippy on this, which I like. I love that. You know, I grew up on a job site. I've always worked in construction. So I understand the need of a grippy knife. And... Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, especially with all the different materials and nasty stuff you deal with, you know, it's nice having a good grippy knife in your hand. And then, but the clip though, you know, he did, uh, Timbo did bend it up just a little bit. So it's not completely, you know, really tight on this very you know, aggressive surface. Otherwise it could possibly chew up your pants. So, but I didn't have that problem since he did what he did with the clip. But I could see that being a problem for some people. But the clip worked just fine. It works great in and out of the pocket. I just found that it felt a little small for the knife when it was in the pocket. You know, maybe just a little bit. And it might have had something to do with the tension since it doesn't have a ton of tension. But not a big deal. Like I said, the clip works great and you have a good amount to grab it and pull it out. Um, especially if you're the type of person that doesn't like deep carry clips. It does have the lanyard hole, as you can see. So what are some bad things? What are some bad? So I got a couple. One, I don't like T6s. Um, I mention that all the time. It's not that big of a deal. You just got to be careful if you maintain maintenance your knife and you take it apart. Um, if you do flip the clip over to the other side, you want to be careful because they are T6s. Just make sure you have good hardware and you should be fine. Um, but I would rather see T8s, especially on a harder use knife. You know, the bigger the screws, also the stronger. So it's not just about the maintenance of the knife. Um, I don't doubt that these aren't very strong, but you know. I mean, you're already going with the triad lock and, you know, kind of a hard use type of knife. So why not? Anyways, next, um, this hump right here, it kind of gets in the way a little bit of things. Like I find like when I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm locked in a lot of times. And then there's just times where I feel like it just kind of gets in the way a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. So I don't want you guys to think that I'm really making that big of a stink about it. But like I said, even in the action department, you know, like when I use it for the action, there's times when, or like even just learning, like I, I had to make sure I didn't let my finger hit on the way open because it likes to hit on the way open. So, you know, you just got to get used to it. Next thing, the, the action's a little slouchy. I mean, and I think a lot of it has to do with this little spot. So if it wasn't there, you know, it'd be a little bit better. Um, also, just like this is very, like, see that? The resistance right there is very weak. So that's something, you know, not a, that big of a deal. I mean, I've jumped out of a lot of dump trucks and stuff, and I've even had my knives open up in my pocket before, like jumping out of dump trucks and stuff like that or off of things. And um, so it's something I think about. Luckily, it has the resistance or the tension constantly pulling it back in, so not that big of a deal. But <clears throat> the action, um, I do enjoy the slow roll, but... So I would, you know, I don't know. It's not that big of a deal, but, you know, I, I prefer to slow roll it versus flicking it open, which usually is what you want to do with a back lock anyways, right? Um, next thing is, is these back locks, I just wish that Cold Steel would have put that little dent right there that a lot of back locks have. It's just a little tiny finger dent. 
and all it does is it, it makes it more comfortable for when you press the lock in. Especially if you gotta press the lock all the way. This one's nice and broken in. So it's not as strong as some, but it would be so much more comfortable if it just had that little dent. Um, next thing. Um, which isn't that big of a deal, but I wish they would have kept the, the CTS XHP. This is S35 VN. I just wish Cold Steel would have kept the CTS XHP. Next thing, I don't think that they have these in uh, satin blades. I wish that they would have gave that an option. I mean, S35 VN is a stainless steel. I just, I would have loved to have seen this in a satin blade. If they do have satin blades, let me know down in the comments. I'm pretty sure they don't though. At least I, I don't think I've ever seen one. But, yeah. Anyways, um, it is a great knife. And I do like the thumb studs. Um, I like the type of texturing it has. The jimping on the back, you know, this doesn't do anything back here. Um, so I don't, I, I think it's just for looks. Um, and I don't mind that there's not any jimping on it. That's not a big deal to me. Um, but, but yeah. Great knife. It does feel a little blocky. Uh, that's just the one last thing if I was going to complain about anything. It feels a little blocky in the hand and it has to do because these are flat and it's thin. So kind of like the Code 4 a little bit. But it's not that big of a deal and it's still relatively comfortable in the hand and it works good. So I got to give this blade shape a lot of credit because the blade shape and the the... The type of grind it has definitely adds a lot to this knife. You know, it's not, I'm not saying it's amazing blade geometry or anything like that, but it works. And it especially works good for what it's for. You know, being a work knife and having the triad lock makes it to where it balances very well. You know, the thickness behind the edge with the thickness um, behind the spine with the small, with the slight, I'm going to call it a slight hollow grind, makes it to where it works very well, you know, considering that it's, you know, a little bit of a stronger, harder um, use knife. Now, I'm not saying hard use like a fixed blade, but, you know, compared to a lot of knives, it's going to be able to take a little bit more damage so amazing knife i do enjoy it a lot i do like it a lot i'm happy i finally got to check it out because it's been a long time coming a long time coming i've been wanting to check this thing out ever since the first time i heard slicey dicey sing american lawman there you guys go i love you guys thanks timbo peace